QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Cash Payment for Inventory Linked to Purchase Order or PO. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the home page to the gray area, going to the view drop down, noting we've got the hide icon bar, open windows lists checked off, open windows open on the left hand side, reports drop down, company and financial. Let's open up that PL profit and loss with the range change of 10123. 12 31 23 january to december no activity yet still no none yet we're going to say reports drop down company and financial this time the balance sheet let's open it up por favor customize the reports up top with the change into the range in 010123 to 12 31 23 and then we'll go to the fonts and the numbers to change those to 12 okay yes okay so in prior presentations, we imagined we started up the company file, bringing in the beginning balances from our prior accounting system. Now we are imagining we're going through the setup process, often needing to be done before you start generating revenue. First financing, putting the capital into the business. We did so with the owner putting money into the business, as well as taking out a loan. Then we took some of that money, we put it into the uh, in, uh, investment, we put it into an investment here. Then we're starting to purchase stuff with that money that we're gonna then use to generate revenue in the future. That will typically be the property plant and equipment, the depreciable assets, the things we need in order to do the job to generate revenue in the future. And in our case, we also need inventory. We're gonna use that money to buy the inventory that we're then going to use to generate revenue so we still don't have any revenue in this period because we're kind of going through that setup process last time if i go to the home page we went to the purchase order which doesn't actually record a transaction but instead is just a request for inventory only a form which would only be used if you had a kind of relationship with the vendor where you can where you have a little bit more control on the purchasing side of things you can ask or request the inventory in this case guitars and not have to pay for them until you receive them otherwise you wouldn't have that situation you would have to just basically make a payment at the point in time you purchase in a similar way that you would if you're buying personally from amazon or some other online distributor and you would just basically be uh, recording the transaction at that point in time because that's when basically you paid for it but we're imagining the purchase order then we're imagining that stuff, the guitars in our case, the inventory that we're going to sell, arrives to our warehouse, to our shop, and we open it up. It's got a bill with it. So we're going to be tying out what we received to what we ordered. So we'll tie out the purchase order to the bill that we got and the physical count of the inventory in the box to make sure we got everything tied out. And then we'll enter the bill which will then record the inventory. That's when inventory will go up on the balance sheet account of inventory. The other side will then go to accounts payable because we have to then pay the bill. And then we're going to also have the sub ledger that will be impacted. Now that's the normal process because normally we would think we would enter a bill next here. But in this case, because we're trying to focus more on the cash based uh, transactions, even though inventory in and of itself is an accrual transaction, we're going to do the same process, but instead of a bill, we're going to use a check. So we're going to get the bill in the in the box of guitars. But instead of entering a bill and then paying it off with a pay bill, we're just going to basically write a check right when we get it. And we'll kind of skip that accounts payable step in the following month. Next month, 
we will add the bill step and we'll try to do more accrual kind of transactions in the following month. So if we got the purchase order, then we could then uh, go into the, we would most likely go into the vendor center, which you could do here or the drop down vendor center here. And whoever gave us, I'm on the vendor side, we can then look up who gave us, you know, what box of stuff we got. We can go into their vendor item and we could see the purchase orders that are related to it here, making sure you've got all dates checked off if you're working in the future as I am, and you'll see the purchase order. You can also go into the transactions and we can try to search for the purchase orders and we might want to look for all purchase orders or possibly just the ones that are open, the ones for which we have not yet received anything for. And so for our case, we're going to say that we've got Epiphone, these two that uh, we're, re we're receiving the boxes of guitars for. So now we're going to enter those transactions. So I'm going to do that with going back to the homepage, just a check transaction instead of a bill transaction. Notice this is something that uh, you can't really enter directly into the check register because the check is kind of tied to the purchase order. So when you get into more complex transactions, then you, you've got to take that into account. It also makes another complication if you were trying to use bank feeds, meaning uh, if you you can't really wait till something clears the bank as easily if you're trying to connect your check or your bills to the purchase order. So inventory kind of throws off the easiest method of trying to use bank feeds to just depend on bank transactions to record all of your data. So we'll get into bank feeds in a whole nother course or section, but just to mention that from time to time as it comes up. So I'm gonna enter a check and I'm gonna type in that we got this on, well, 1005, okay. Let's say this is on the 14th and then we're, I think it should be 1005. 004 for some reason i'm going to keep it at that and then i'm going to say this is for epiphone epiphone tab and there's oh and it says there's open purchase orders exist for this vendor do you want to receive against one or more i'm going to say yes there's the two purchase orders i'm going to select both of them and say okay so now we're getting that and then it populates down here notice it jumped from expenses, because I'm not just gonna go to an inventory account because we're buying inventory, because if I did that, it wouldn't be able to track the sub ledger by item, the unit item on a perpetual inventory system. So that's why we have to use the items which are populated. We set up the items in a prior presentation here, and then we used those items to, to populate the purchase order. The purchase order then just pulled them over into the actual bill. If I scroll through this, we can see that this ties out to the same data we entered into the two purchase orders. These two down here are billable. These are billable because when we populated them in the purchase order, we said they were for a specific customer. We imagined in this case, Eric Music, our customer came in, said, we want this stuff. We said, we don't have that right now. We will order it from our vendor, Epiphone in this case. and. The vendor didn't need to know about Eric Music, but it's useful for us to see that now I have this stuff, I can turn around and bill or invoice Eric Music, our customer, now that we have the inventory on hand, that'll be the next step. These ones up top are not billable because we, we are just buying those guitars for the shop, hoping people will come in and purchase those. That would be the general idea. All right, let's save that one. Well, before I save it, let's just imagine the transaction that's gonna happen here. This is a check. The check's gonna decrease the checking account. The other side's gonna go to inventory. It's not gonna be an expense, even though we're paying cash for it because inventory is a component where we have to do an accrual kind of component with it typically, putting it on the books as a, an asset. And we're gonna have a sub ledger that's gonna be impacted for the inventory tracking it by item. The sub ledger having to tie out then to what's on the balance sheet. You can also kind of look at the reports here and take a look at uh, the, the well, it won't give me the transaction journal. So it's not gonna give me the journal. Sometimes that journal will give you the debits and credits, but uh, so it's a useful tool for internal use, but whatever, we'll record it and then we'll check it out. We'll say, save it and close it. Let's go to our reports now on the balance sheet. We can scroll down and we see that we have in inventory an increase here. So if I double click on the inventory account, zooming down to the source document, we have these items. They put them in their 
uh, individually. So notice that these are all the same check, 1004, but they have the they, they have broken them out because of the different inventory item transactions here. So that's interesting to note when you're sorting your data. And so there it is, and I can drill back to the source document, closing that back out, closing this back out. The other side is in the checking account, double clicking, zooming in, drilling down on the checking account. And then we have the check 1004. Notice here it's in as one item. It has a split in the other account, which is kind of annoying because the other side really only went to inventory, but it broke it out into those multiple line items. So it can't show you the, the multiple items here. That's why it's a split. If I go into it, then it gets us back to the checking account. Closing this out, closing this out. We can also see if I go to the reports drop down up top, the inventory sub ledger, giving us a detail about the inventory account, changing the date to 1231.23. Then we, we have the adjustments or the items that were sold. Here's our count that we have after that point in time. Let's customize it, fonts and numbers. See if I can bring it to like 11 maybe. So we can drill down on it a little bit. And so it gives us our unit count and we should still tie out 39,976, ties out to the balance sheet, 39,976. Uh, we can also go to the vendor center over here and we can see that the purchase orders that are now open are, have decreased. If I hit the drop down and I look at all purchase orders, here's all the purchase orders. And then if I go to the vendor balance over here, we went to Epiphone. Now we've got this check that has been input. If I open one of these purchase orders, then you can see it's been received in full. It gives you that indication that it's been received. So these little links between the purchase order and either the bill, if we use the bill, or in this case, the check are, are nice from a bookkeeping perspective so that we can, we can communicate to Epiphone whether we got the, the, the merchandise and so on and see those links within the system. Okay, let's do another one. This one's gonna be for Gibson. So we're going to receive, we're going to imagine that for Gibson, we're going to receive these items. So let's go to our check form, which we can go to on the home page. We can see it here, or we can go into the drop down in the banking. If we want to write a check that way, we can't really go into the register. Remember as easily because we want to link this check to the purchase order. So I like to use a form typically in that case. So it's going to be 1005. Let's say this is on the 15th. I'm just going to type in Gibson starts to auto populate, which is nice. There's the vendor I want tab. It says I'm paraphrasing. Hey, there's some open purchase orders here. Do you want to use those? I'm going to say yes, please. Thanks. QuickBooks. Here's the two purchase orders we made. I'm going to say, okay. So once again, we're imagining that Gibson then shipped us these guitars, the Gibson USA's and the Gibson SG's. Hopefully those are the right guitars. I don't know. Those are the guitars we're imagining we received <laughs> and uh, and uh, there was a bill in the box. Now we're not entering a bill into our system because a bill in our system means we're gonna increase the accounts payable, but instead we're just writing a check for the bill, skipping the accounts payable. So you gotta kinda understand the terminology, right? They billed us, meaning they sent us a bill. When I opened it up, the bill that they gave us might say invoice, because to them it's an invoice, because it kinda matters which side of the table you are on. But to us, it's, it would be a bill to us, and we don't have to enter their bill into the QuickBooks system as a bill, because within the QuickBooks system, a bill means that you wanna increase the accounts payable and pay it later. In this case, we're just gonna pay it at the same point in time. Therefore, we're gonna pay off their physical bill with a check form, the check form being the form that decreases the, the checking account. Okay, so then we've got these guitars down below, and this second one is in a similar situation as we saw before is billable because we bought this particular set of Gibsons for a particular customer. Now that we've got the guitar, that's going to remind us and help us to then populate the invoice for us to finally start selling some guitars. So what's the transaction when we record this? It's going to decrease the checking account for the 6892. And then the other side's gonna go to inventory, and then it's also gonna have an impact on the sub ledger for the inventory. So let's save it and close it. Let's check it out. Let's go to the balance sheet. We can see in the checking account, double clicking, zooming back to the source document. There's the check 1005, the other side, which was split account. It really all went to inventory, but because we had two inventory items, it has that split component. 
Double clicking on it takes us back to the check, which is on the items side, indicating that we bought inventory as opposed to assigning it to a particular account, which wouldn't have the same ability to connect to a sub ledger tracking inventory in a perpetual inventory method. Closing this out, closing this out. The other side is in the inventory asset account. And then we can see we had two line items because we had two different kinds of inventory items. Either one of these will go to the same check, which is the total of the 6892, but the two line items are broken out separately in the inventory sub ledger, in essence, the general ledger, the transaction by account. Closing these two out, we can also go to, to the inventory valuation report, which is now populating what's on hand at this point in time. The total value is at the 46,868, which should tie out to what's on the balance sheet, 46,868. If we go to the vendor center and we go to the Gibson, there's the check. If I open up one of these purchase orders, it's now saying that it's received in full. You can see some more detail uh, on this item, open balance zero and so on. Closing this out, closing this out. If I go to the transaction detail, here's all the purchase orders. If I just wanna see the open purchase orders, here's the open purchase order at this time. In other words, the purchase order that we have not yet received. Let's do that one. So this time I'm not even gonna to go to the homepage. I'm just gonna to go to the banking and write a check. And we're gonna say, okay, this is for the diamond with a diamond, which I think should have a D. Do you wanna purchase order? I'm gonna say, yes, there's the purchase order. Check it off, okay boom the 15th we'll keep that as the date 75 and so once again it's on the item side three of those so that looks good it's populating those we would tie them out to the physical box of ukuleles we got and uh, say okay that's good what's this going to do decrease the checking account by 72 dollars the other side going to inventory for 72 dollars and it's going to have an impact on the sub ledger for three ukuleles so we'll say save it and close it and then let's go to our balance sheet double clicking drilling down on the checking account and there's the diamond head uh check 51006 there it is looks correct closing this back out closing this back out the other side is on the inventory and so there we have just one line item because we just bought one item worth three of the same item and then the sub ledger in the inventory sub ledger now tying out to 46,940. Notice this is the retail price, what we expect to sell them for, but we have them on the books for what we bought them for, 46,940. That's their value to us until we actually sell them. <laughs> 46,940. Uh, so there is that. If I go into the vendor center, then nothing's open in the open purchase orders at this point. Here's all the purchase orders. Nothing are still open. Vendor, if I go to diamond head, diamond head, then we've got we've got the check here and the purchase order has now been received in full so is there any impact on the income statement yet have we made any money in the profit and loss no not yet right because now we've we've actually bought the inventory and some of those inventory we bought specifically for a customer so in the future now that we've gone through the through the buying of the inventory side and we've got our shop we've got them we we're able to pick up the stuff we could tell the customer where to pick them up and whatnot now we can turn around and at least invoice for those those couple purchases that we purchased for the specific customers and that will finally get us some action on the inven on the income statement uh, for revenue it will also give us some cost of goods sold recording the expense at the point in time that we consumed it of the inventory that we purchased right right now the inventory is not an expense because it's on the books as inventory it'll move to cost of goods sold in a perpetual inventory system when we sell the inventory with a invoice or a sales receipt so let's go and make one more report reports drop down this is going to be accounting and taxes let's look at the trial balance just to check our numbers oh one let's go from oh one oh one two three to twelve thirty one two three customize that report fonts and numbers let's bring it up let's bring it to like 14 even let's go crazy with this that's like two whole things higher than normal so then you can check your numbers here and if anything is off then you can you can uh, drill down on on them to look at the detail and change the date 
because we're not working in real time it's often a date issue if you find something that the date is wrong in or so you've got a wrong dollar amount you could drill down on it drill down to the source document and make the changes you need which is something you might not always want to do in practice unless you're you're sure of what you're doing but in a practice problem you have that capacity which is quite nice to keep us all in alignment we will go over all of the transaction detail reports at the end of of the whole section of the first month of transactions which is another great way if we can't figure out where something is off to kind of drill down and hone down on where the problem is